Hello everyone, my name is Mandy Lynn. I'm an author, book cover designer, and the creator of the Book Launch Planner. And today I'm going to be diving into everything that I'm doing to plan the book launch of my first ever children's book. And almost every step that you see me go through here are also steps that you can use for any book you decide to release. So if you'd like to see how I go into planning everything, be sure to stay tuned. If you enjoy weekly videos on writing, publishing, and book marketing, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss an upload. Let me be the first to say that today is release day for the book launch planner. If you'd like to order your own copy, it will be linked down below. In today's video, I'm telling you all about how I'm using the book launch planner to plan the book launch for my first children's book, Mr. Moon's Big Move. Every planner comes with a set of stickers. These stickers are used to create tabs on your calendar so you can start using the calendar any time of year you would like. And if you'd like, you can also purchase bonus stickers. These are the these social media stickers. They were given to anyone who pre-ordered, but if you miss the pre-order period, you can order the, your social media stickers separately so you can plan out all your social media posts. The stickers that are included are Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Goodreads, and of course your newsletter. With that said, let's jump into the video. Today I'm using my book launch planner to plan the release. I will let you know my copy of the book launch planner, since I'm the creator of the book launch planner, is a a defective copy. Um, I figured if I'm gonna use a copy myself might as well be a defective one and um, I also spilled a drink over it so ignore the splotchiness of some of my stickers. It's not normally like that. I'm just clumsy. So diving right into it, right now I'm in the researching phase of my marketing. So I'm on page seven, which is Know Your Market, where I'm writing down what the main genre of the book is, the subgenre, and some of the keywords for the book. So I've already decided the main genre of the book is a juvenile children's book ages two to seven. That basically means it's a picture book and the kid will not be reading it, the parents will be reading to the kid. And the subgenre is a children's book animal cats. So it specifically is a picture book about a cat. So that would be the subgenre. I will probably figure out a few other subgenres later, but for now that's the main one and that's the one that I'm working with. And lastly for keywords, basically what I did was I found other books on Amazon that are picture books about cats and I did some research to see what their keywords are. And so far basically all I have is children's book, cats, beginning reading books, and cat books for kids. And I will let you know I used the Publisher Rocket tool to to research some keywords and I'll probably use that tool once again in the future to research even more keywords because this is just a starting point um, but if you are interested in learning more about publisher rocket it will be linked down below I highly recommend the software Next I turn the page and I have the ideal reader profile. So basically I'm filling out this profile thinking who my ideal reader is and you wanna get really specific so I don't want you to generalize anything. So for example, this book is technically gender neutral. It'll appeal to males and females because it's about a cat. What three-year-old doesn't like cats? I don't care if they're a boy or a girl, odds are they like cats unless they're a dog person, in which case that's fine. But when you're filling out this profile, I don't want you to be politically correct, so to speak. I want you to be as specific as you can. So in my case, today I'm thinking from a girl's point of view, but odds are, since this is a children's book, if I think from a boy's point of view, it's really not gonna change all that much. Down the line, I might do another ideal reader profile where I fill it out from a boy's perspective, but for now, I'm doing from a girl's perspective. So I'm thinking in terms of what their age is, which is three, their gender, female, their education, pre-K slash kindergarten. And then we jump into more specific things like what genres do they read? Early reader picture books. What genres do they dislike? Chapter books because they can't read that yet. 
And then who are their favorite authors? So in this case, it would probably be more so the parents' favorite authors. And so in that case, I just started writing out the authors of some classic children's books. That way I have something to go off of. So all of this that I'm writing in my Ideal Reader profile, I will actually be using all this information to figure out how I should market it. So for example, favorite authors. I can use favorite authors as keywords when I'm creating Amazon ads. That way I can target the ad even better. So another way that you can use the Ideal Reader profile to figure out how to target your reader is how do they normally discover books they're going to read? So in this case, a child is not the one discovering the book. It would be the parent of the child discovering the book. So how do they figure that out? Well, usually parents will read picture books to their kids that other parents recommend. So first and foremost would be word of mouth. But where are parents on social media? Which is the next question. Are they on social media? What are their favorite platforms? Most parents are on Facebook. Uh, they probably are on other places as well, depending on the age of the parent. Um, but kind of my ideal reader would be, or the ideal reader of the book who reads to their child would be on Facebook because that's where a lot of, you know, if a parent needs advice, they post on Facebook. Um, whereas Instagram isn't that sort of platform as much. So the next page is another great page. This is comparative titles, also known as comp titles. Basically, you're figuring out what similar books are in your genre and who your competitors are. So for me, my biggest competitor is Pete the Cat. This is a series of children's books by James Dean and um, he's all over Amazon. So like if I go on Amazon and look at the the category for uh, children's picture books about cats, he is all over that category. Um, so if I wanted to do an Amazon ad, I could use his books and his name as keywords to help target my ad. And same goes for all the other comparative titles that I found. Most of them were picture books about cats and some of them were picture books about moving because Moon, Mr. Moon's big move, that is what the story's all about. It's when we take him home from the farm because that's what the story is all about, Mr. Moon's big move. So it would be smart to find a comp title that has the same sort of premise. So the next few pages I actually haven't filled out yet, so I'm going to fill these out as I go through it with you guys. Um, the next page is pitch your book. So there are four different ways I can pitch my book using my book's selling point, using my book's genre, using my book's comp titles, or using my book's opening scene. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so admittedly, a lot of these pitches are more or less along the same lines because this is a children's book and it's a children's book that's 24 pages. Not a lot can happen in 24 pages, so it can be a little bit more tricky to come up with a pitch that varies. Um, but this is just a good exercise to have, especially if you're someone who writes novels. You can use this to really kind of come up with different ways to pitch your book. So on the next page is the book blurb. And your book blurb is what's going to be on the back of the book. It's going to be the quick paragraph for describing what the book is about and hopefully what will hook the reader in. So basically the idea is after you've written all these different pitches, that should kind of help you get an idea of what your book blurb should be. And do know I'm writing everything in pen. I do not recommend that. I don't know why. I think I just like the purple cover and I wanted to go with a purple pen. Uh, but I highly recommend writing in pencil because uh, I've already messed up multiple times and um, you're going to have to cross it off if you don't have a pencil. Now I will say for a children's book, the book blurbs are freakishly short. Uh, usually it's more about the author or what credentials the author has rather than the book itself. Uh, book blurbs for children's books tend to be a sentence or two and then they'll go into like, oh this is the author of the award winning book, blah blah blah. But you get the idea. So I'm not even going to waste my time because I actually already wrote the book blurb and I'll add it in on this page later. Uh, but moving on to the publishing to-do list, this is a page with just 
all the big overarching publishing to do's. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cross off things that I've already done. I've done things like chosen a release date, I created a budget, I've been printing receipts and tracking expenses as I get them, but because I'm doing almost everything myself, there's not a lot. I've chosen where the book will be printed, which for me, I'm doing Ingram Spark, and once the book is officially released, I'll be doing a Kindle Direct Publishing. I'm doing a paid ISBN. I have a plan for an editor. I am my own cover designer. Um, I have a plan to edit and proofread the book and I have not filed for copyright yet, but I will eventually. And then the next page is the book launch timeline. So I'm actually gonna fill this out with you guys because I've kind of already filled it out in the calendar pages here, but I haven't filled it out on the actual timeline page where I can kind of see things a little bit better. So let me once again mention that this is a children's book and the way you publish a children's book is completely different from the same sort of techniques you want to use for a novel. Um, so while there are a ton of pages in this planner that I love and adore, there's a lot that don't really apply to me. So being completely open and honest, my plan for an editor is to use beta readers and those beta readers I will hopefully just have uh, teachers, people who work with kids on a daily basis because this isn't, this is a passion project of mine. I am aware that this is not going to be an award winning children's book. I just want this to be a fun project and something that parents and teachers approve of. So those are the people that are going to be my beta readers and then of course I will also have a round of proofreaders to make sure that there aren't any typos or mishaps in the book. So that's my plan for editors. So that's why when you see me fill out the book's launch timeline, it may look a little wonky, but that's the reasoning behind it. And also, again, don't write in pen. As soon as I started writing some dates down, I was like, that's not correct, but whatever. So again, then there's a whole nother page of marketing over here with your street team and blog tour and Instagram outreach and all this stuff, which you can do for a children's book. Um, but I don't think I plan on doing it right now. Who knows? That may change down the line. So for now, I'm just leaving it blank. Uh, then we have goal setting. The goal setting page is awesome. I've never released a children's book before, so I'm aiming real low when it comes to goals. Uh, since I really haven't spent anything on this project yet, really the only money I will spend on is... Um, filing for copyright probably because I was able to design everything myself. I'm working with people who are willing to edit for free because it's a children's book. It's really not going to take that much time to look through. Um, and also Ingram Spark normally has a fee when you publish a book through them, but uh, due to situations right now, they actually have a coupon code where you can um, upload new files for free. So that saves me cost there. So really, I haven't spent a dime yet. So because of that, I also have a really small goal of selling 20 books for pre-order. And unfortunately, when you publish through Ingram Spark, you don't get to see what your pre-order stats are until a few days leading up to the release which is really annoying because I'm the type of person who will gauge how well I'm doing and how much harder I need to push based on what my sales are so far. So for example, if the book was selling amazing, then I would push even harder because I'd be like, this is great. Um, or if the book wasn't selling at all, I'd probably be like, okay, I need to re read look at my marketing strategy because something's going wrong here. Uh, so then over here we have the expense tracker and again I haven't spent a dime yet um, and I really just have to look up what the costs are for copyright again because I forget and that should really be the only cost and I don't need to outsource anyone because I am my own little uh, designer. <laughs> 
And I also, this isn't the type of book where I'd want to hire a PR company or anything like that. If it was a novel, I would probably consider working with someone who does like Instagram tours, but it's not and I'm, I, I don't care that much. <laughs> So then we have the cover reveal checklist. So this is the checklist that I used when I uh, revealed my cover and it saved me because one, I didn't realize that my book was on Amazon but wasn't actually selling. I went on Amazon to double check and realized that it was listed but not listed for sale. So I had to fix that on the back end. Funny story, me fixing the listing actually made it so Amazon was selling and shipping copies of my book before release date. Uh, so if you pre-ordered the book, I greatly apologize. Contact Amazon and they will resend you the book in July when it is finalized and officially published. If you want the full lowdown on what happened, why it happened, and how to make it so it doesn't happen to you, um, visit the link up above in the info cards or it will be also linked down below. Again, I am so sorry and Moon himself has come to apologize because his face is on the cover. So he feels... He feels responsible too, right? Yeah, I thought so too. And then I also completely forgot that I needed to upload the book to Goodreads. So I also did that. And then there's more cover reveal stuff. There's street team checklist, which I love. I, I, I have a hard time with street teams just because I have a hard time keeping myself organized. So this is actually some of the favorite pages in my planner. However, for this book in particular, we're not doing a street team. Just because that's not my audience, I don't expect you guys to promote a children's book when normally I write um, like fiction. So, well this is fiction technically. When I write young adult or adult fiction. So more pages on street teams, blah, blah, blah. More pages on advanced reader copies. Again, maybe I'll change my mind later, but right now that's not a huge concern. Uh, Instagram outreach examples. I might do that. Like if I find Instagrammers who focus on children's books, I would love to have them feature Mr. Boone's big move. So I might actually end up using this page, uh, but not right now. And then Blog tour example, again, if I find like mom bloggers, that's actually, this is probably gonna be my best bet is if I reach out to moms that are bloggers and they wanna feature the book, then this will be a very helpful page, which again, maybe once I get closer, I will go ahead and do that, but right now my focus is on the pre-marketing research and also just making sure that the book is finalized and ready for beta readers at the end of this month. Um, so then there's a blogger contact list, a bookstore message example, due to the virus, uh, I won't be going to bookstores anytime soon, but you bet that I do plan on doing this eventually, and maybe doing something fun, I don't know, we'll see. And then there's a bookstore contact list right here. There's your release day to-do list, which I will need on July 14th when this officially releases. And then um, we have passwords, which I should probably fill all of this out because God knows I change my passwords about once a week because I don't remember them. Um, so eventually I'll be smart enough to actually fill that out. And my year at a glance, which again, I haven't filled out yet and I think that's more due to the fact that my brain is all in shambles. Um, but I do plan on filling this out eventually because um, 2020 has been rough and I need to re reorganize myself. Then we have a monthly spread where you can plan out your monthly newsletter and also track your stats. And then oh, you have your actual big month calendar, which is, this is really what I use. This is like my saving grace. Um, my weekly goals are here. And then this is just the big overarching outline. Uh, right now things are looking pretty blank, especially June. But I hope that exciting things will happen in June and things will really start get moving in June. So this should be filled out a lot more once June comes around. And then lastly, July, so far all we have is release day on um, the 14th. We've got the release day sticker, which is super exciting. Um, but that's about it. So this is, this is just the very quick filled out version of the planner. I do plan on later probably going in 
with pencil this time <laughs> and really filling it out and really doing some research. But if you're at all interested in the book launch planner and using it to launch your own book, be sure to visit the description down below. Again, this is actually the day that it comes out. So super, super exciting. So thank you to everyone who has ordered their planner. If you already have it in your possession, I hope you are enjoying it so far. If you can share it on social media using hashtag the book launch planner, that would be amazing. You can also tag me on Instagram at the book launch planner. I love seeing everyone's photos and especially when you have pages that you filled out, it makes me super happy. And if you enjoyed the book launch planner, be sure to go to my website and leave a review on the website. It's a huge way to help me as an entrepreneur and to prove to other customers that this is a legit product that they will enjoy. That is it for this week's video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below letting me know what you're most excited about for planning your book launch and if you have the book launch planner, what some of your favorite pages are. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next week.